My name is Sanjay Gupta. I'm a consultant cardiologist in York. Today's video is on the subject of the bicuspid aortic valve. A lot of people have written to me and said, look, you know, I've been diagnosed with a bicuspid aortic valve. What does it mean? Uh, what does it mean for my future? So here is the video. Okay. So the first thing to understand is that the aortic valve is the exit valve of the heart. When the heart contracts, it forces open this one-way uh, valve to push the blood out into the main blood vessel, the aorta, from where the blood is distributed to the rest of the body. If there is a problem with this valve, then the heart may not be able to pump out blood as efficiently, and this will impact on how much blood is delivered to the rest of the body. Usually, the valve is made of three leaflets, and hence, when the valve is closed, it resembles a Mercedes-Benz sign. In patients with a bicuspid valve, there are only two functioning leaflets making up the valve. This may be because the patient was born with only two leaflets to start off with, or in fact the patient did have three leaflets but two fused together and therefore was left with only two functioning leaflets. The problem is that when the valve structure is abnormal, the blood flow through the valve will not be as efficient or streamlined as normal and therefore the valve will be subjected to a lot more wear and tear. There are two consequences to more wear and tear. Firstly, the valve is more likely to calcify, thicken and narrow to the point that it may impact on the blood coming out of the heart. Secondly, the valve is more likely to degenerate and therefore become more leaky. So a bicuspid aortic valve can, is more prone to getting narrowed, and a bicuspid aortic valve is also more prone to leak. A bicuspid aortic valve is a congenital or inherited problem. The patient is born with it. It is in fact the most common inherited problem. It is estimated that more than 1% of the population have a bicuspid aortic valve. One in every hundred people you meet on the street will have a bicuspid aortic valve. Most of these patients will not know that they have a bicuspid valve because unless the valve is excessively narrowed or excessively leaky, it will not cause any symptoms. And so it happens, it is usually discovered incidentally, either when an astute doctor is listening to the chest and hears a murmur and therefore organizes a scan which then diagnoses it, or if the patient happens to be having a scan for some other reason and then it's found at that point. As it is an inherited condition, it is also found more frequently in family members of a patient. So the prevalence is 9 to 10 percent in first degree relatives. This means that if a patient has a bicuspid aortic valve, one in every 10 of their first degree relatives will also have a bicuspid aortic valve. And therefore, these days we recommend that if you are found to have a bicuspid aortic valve, that you inform all your first degree relatives and advise them also to have a heart scan uh, so that those patients who actually may have it are picked up. If it isn't there on the scan, then it isn't there because it's something that's usually present from birth. So you don't need to continue scanning relatives. If it's not there, it's not there. You just need one scan. I think it's also important to understand that an aortic valve is made from the tissue of the aorta, the big blood vessel. And therefore, patients who have a bicuspid aortic valve also have a, additional problems with their aorta or other blood vessels in their body. That's why bicuspid aortic valve is said to be associated with an aortopathy, disease of the aorta. Patients with a bicuspid aortic valve may have uh, narrowings in the aorta, that's called coarctation of the aorta, where somewhere downstream the aorta is narrowed because, again, of this problem with the actual um, uh, tissue of the aorta. The bicuspid aortic valve is also a problem with the tissue of the aorta. Um, you can also get uh, dilatation and aneurysms of the aorta. Uh, you may get abnormal connections between uh, one blood vessel and another blood vessel. This is called a PDA or patent ductus arteriosus. You may have 
uh, defects within the heart itself, like a ventricular septal defect, a hole in the heart. You may get aneurysms in other blood vessels, such as intracranially. You can also get sinus of valsalva aneurysms, which are um, aneurysms around the aorta, just where it's coming out of the heart. And you can also get anomalous heart arteries, anomalous coronary arteries. So these, so uh, patients with bicuspid aortic valve often may also have additional pathology in their blood vessels. And therefore, in my own practice, if I find that a patient has a bicuspid aortic valve, I would usually look carefully for other associated lesions because those other associated lesions may have a bearing uh, on the person's longevity of their own accord. What is the natural history of a bicuspid aortic valve? Well, there are some patients in whom the bicuspid aortic valve, even though it's abnormal, continues to function normally without causing that patient any problems for the duration of that patient's lifespan. But at least a third, and probably a majority, will develop some sort of complication in their lifetime. If the patient is lucky enough not to have a complication, then their life expectancy is the same as that of anyone in the normal population. However, complications, as I say, are common, and these include, number one, the valve may become progressively narrowed, get tighter and tighter, and eventually be so tight that when it actually obstructs blood from coming out of the heart, and can, that can present with breathlessness, exercise intolerance, dizziness, blackouts. The valve may also become progressively more leaky. And again, the same problem uh, happens there because the blood uh, comes out of the valve but then leaks back in, so the net result is less blood is going around the body. Uh, the valve is also more prone to getting infected. A bicuspid aortic valve is more prone to getting infected. And the reason for that is that because the valve is calcified and narrowed, uh, the fact that you've got this um, uh, calcification, uh, that actually is a nice haven for bugs to sit in and multiply. And therefore, patients with bicuspid aortic valve don't respond uh, to antibiotics as quickly because these bugs can sit around the valve and, um, and um, you know, proliferate and not uh, get killed by the antibiotics. So a bicuspid aortic valve is also more prone to uh, infection. And there may be other complications as a result of the bicuspid aortic valve, including these associated lesions that I described, like progressive dilatation of the aorta. And if someone doesn't pick up this dilatation of the aorta, then that can even uh, get to the point where the aorta can dissect or rupture, and that can be a life-threatening complication. The treatment of a bicuspid aortic valve is usually uh, surgery, uh, uh, but only surgery is only needed when a complication develops. So if you have a bicuspid aortic valve, you have no problems from it, you're, you know, you're able to function, you don't need anything. But if the valve narrows to the point that it's causing you breathlessness, or if you develop uh, an infection, or if you develop progressive dilatation of the aorta, then you probably need surgery. Bicuspid valves in general will require surgery five to 10 years before patients who have normal valves. Uh, so a normal valve can also narrow, a normal valve can also leak. Um, but in general, in those patients, the, the complication develops much later. In a bicuspid aortic valve, the complication develops at least five to 10 years beforehand. In those patients who require aortic valve surgery before the age of 50, at least two thirds will have a bicuspid aortic valve. Even patients who develop an infection of their bicuspid aortic valve are more likely to need surgery to replace the valve compared to their counterparts who have a trileaflet normal valve who have a similar infection. If there is an associated lesion such as an aneurysm or dilatation, uh, then the surgeon will plan to operate it at the same sitting. And the good news is that even though the surgery may seem really daunting, the operative and post-operative risks are very low. At 30 days post-operatively, mortality is between 0 and 2.5%, depending on the experience of the surgeon and the center that you have your procedure done at. 
Uh, another good bit of news is that there is now a keyhole method by which aortic valves can be fixed. This is called TAVI, and this procedure is being performed in several centers worldwide, and the results seem to be as good with this procedure as with open-heart surgery, provided patients are selected carefully. So in summary, the main points here are, I think it goes without saying that if you've been found to have a bicuspid aortic valve, you should have regular surveillance of the valve, uh, and you should therefore attend for an echocardiogram once every year or twice every year to allow careful monitoring to see to see whether the valve is getting leakier or na or narrower, and also to look for associated lesions such as aortic dilatation. In fact, I think it's important that as a patient you insist that your doctor looks at the rest of the aorta to make sure there are no other lesions which can be associated with this bicuspid valve. I think it's very, very important to, again, emphasize that lifestyle is really important. It makes you a healthier person. It will probably delay the onset of complications. And the healthier you are, the lower the overall risk from operative intervention should you ever need it. A bicuspid, bicuspid aortic valves tend to be more prone to getting infected. And therefore, in my own practice, if a person with a bicuspid aortic valve undergoes a dental procedure or an operation somewhere else, then I tend to recommend um, antibiotics prophylactically, and this is to kill any bugs quickly so that this valve doesn't get infected. I think the guidelines differ from what I'm saying uh, because the guidelines say that uh, bicuspid aortic valves are not a very high risk lesion, uh, and so they don't re advocate it. But I usually speak to my patients, I talk to them about the potential risk, and if they're keen to take necessary precautions, then I tend to support their decision. Uh, finally, if a complication does develop, then timely surgery does fix the problem and allow patients to get back to a very acceptable level of functioning. The risks associated with an operation are generally very low. So I hope you found this useful. I wish you a happy and healthy new year. Thank you for all the amazing support you've given to me thus far. Um, I'm desperate to grow the channel and therefore it would mean a ton to me if you'd consider sharing the videos and subscribing to the channel. I'm also beginning to send out PDF transcripts of the videos via WhatsApp broadcasts and these can be received by sending me a WhatsApp message on 0044795131. 0008. Thank you so much. All the best.